Hey guys, right back here, main tank for Synesthesia, and welcome both you and me back to the channel. And now I realize my tank guides are way out of date. Like, and towards the Burning Throne out of date. And now that Battle for Azeroth is here, I'm back, you're back, we're back, and it's time to update those tank guides. Let's start with, of course, what's going to be my main, the Blood Death Knight. Now, I did miss the Paladin Guide in Legion, but I will make sure I get that as soon as I can. So, let's get started, shall we? Of course, the basics. Um, don't get hit in the back, because you lose all of your defensive values. Make sure you have the most threat, which after they did nerf the threat in this expansion, now threat is act actually matters for all tanks. Every single one. So you actually have to make sure you have aggro this time. It's not just blood boil, you're good. It's actually a little bit tougher. Plus Skittish is still in the game of Mythic Plus, so that really gives you a test. So make sure you have aggro, don't get hit in the back. But that's about it for the basics. Let's go right to the talent, shall we? The talents have changed, by the way. A lot. We actually got... Some some that moved, some some additions, some removals. Things changed, and now the way we do things is, is different. Also, PvP talents are integrated in here now, especially if, you're, if your war mode is turned on, like mine is. But let's get to the PvE talents first. We got Heartbreaker, Blood Drinker, Rune Strike. Two of these are old. Rune Strike is a return, I believe. But it also depends on what you're doing. I usually take Heartbreaker, though, because the extra runic power from my Heart Strike is really nice. Especially for dungeons, which has been my, my main focus. I still see a use for Blood Drinker maybe in raids. However, they nerfed it by quite a lot. So I haven't used it as much. I might still use Heartbreaker mostly because of the fact that it generates extra rooting power. Rune Strike is okay, but the extra rune, it, it's just not really worth it because if you want to use an extra bone shield charge, you have to use both charges, which are both 60 second cooldown. The, cool, the, the cooldown of each recharge is too long, which is why I stuck with Heartbreaker. This line is interesting because we still have Rapid Decomposition, which is the Blood Plague and your Death of Decay doing its thing more often. This what that, I was using this for a while until Hemostasis came around. For those who don't remember, Hemostasis was our best in slot legendary. Skullflower's Hemostasis was the name. Each enemy hit by Blood Boil increases the damage and healing of your next death strike by now 8%. Stack it to 5 times. It is a nerf from the Legendary. But it's still the best talent to go with because it, it gives you a lot more healing when you need to use that death strike. Trust me. Even though it's a 12% nerf from 20% to 8, still a lot. Plus, if you're fighting a bunch of mobs, you still only need to use Blood Boil once because... It's not per blood boil use, it's per target hit. Consumption was the artifact ability in Legion. This was very this was strong in Legion because of the fact that it also gave you the group wide leech. But that's not a thing anymore, unfortunately. They've removed they've removed the artifact like like a general, which means we lost our group wide leech. So this lost a lot of its strength. Which is why I'm going to recommend Hemostasis for any Death Knight, whether it's dungeon or raid. Because the extra healing from Death Strike is very, very great, and Blood Boils should really be in your rotation anyway. Hit the 8 line, not a whole lot changed here. Actually, there was one change. Foul Bulwark most moved up here, Azuary is still here, and Tombstone. There's really two choices here. Foul Bulwark is one good choice, even though it got nerfed by half. Because each charge of Bone Shield increases the maximum health by what's now 1%. It used to be 2%. So even though that's a half nerf, it's still usable. Because it gives you more health. 
which means you're probably not going to die. But I still take Ajuary because even though... Let me see. Yeah. So while you have at least five Bone Shield charges, I always tell people six to be safe. The cost of Death Strike is reduced by five Runic Power, and you get more Runic Power cap. So you're up to 125 Runic Power, and it only costs 40 instead of 45. So which means you, if which means if you, if you just decide to dump all your runes, all your Runic Power, you can actually use a, a third Death Strike. Tombstone is okay. It's a it's basically a shield. However. It's not exactly key because you're you're basically using the same amount of bone shield charges as you would need to keep a Bajuary. and I and I feel like you need the extra runic power and the and the discount, especially now that they actually nerfed the Death Knight's healing and they're probably gonna nerf it again in the next patch because Bone Storm's getting nerfed, but it's still gonna be strong. So I'm gonna recommend Ajuary. This line actually has choices now. And Will of the Necropolis is finally a go-to. Damage taken below 35% health is reduced by 35%. It's basically the anti-execute defensive. Where normally people have different talents that add a certain amount of health, they do more damage. At least of the mob. Here, if you go down to under, you get almost like an anti-execute defensive. It's actually really good now. Anti-magic barrier, it's pretty decent. It, it's basically your anti-magic shell is better, which is really nice for those magic fights. And rune tap, I still use on occasion. To be honest, there's there's actually a few choices you could pick here. I go between rune tap and will. This one in in dungeons because mobs start hurting a lot less when you're down when you're almost dead. And rune tap, I, I take on occasion if I don't feel like I'm going to be threatened that much, or if I just need an extra defensive cooldown. So I, I would take rune tap or will. This row, I see play in multiple talents. I use grip of the dead in dungeons because death and decay slow is super good. It's a 90% slow. It decays by 10% per second, but it's still really, really fucking good. Like. If you're in a dungeon, this is the only talent to take. Tightening Grasp is still okay. It reduces your mass grip's cooldown. But it's not as good because... See, Tightening Grasp and Grip of the Dead used to be all in one talent under the Tightening Grasp tool tooltip. But they separated them, turned them into two separate talents. They took the slow off of Tightening Grasp and put it as a Grip of the Dead. But I still take Grip of the Dead for the slow. Even the reduced cooldown isn't really worth it right now. The Wraith Walk, if you're doing like a raid, sure. Because you don't really need Grip of the Dead in a raid. So I would take Root Wraith Walk in case you get rooted or whatever. Because you can still get out of roots. So this is pretty good. And speaking of certain talents. Bloodworms is finally good. It's finally a go-to after so many years. It's finally the winning pick. And I say finally because it's been garbage ever since the release of the Death Knight class, pretty much. It's always been bad. The other choices of whatever line it was in were always better. But now it's actually decent because Mark of Blood is not that great. The two percent of the victim of the victim's maximum health is not enough, and it costs way too much runic power. And voracious, as good as it pretty much is, you need to have a certain amount of haste to be able to use it. Bloodworms can give you healing while there's downtime, and because there's a lot of downtime, it's a go-to because you can't really keep up voracious that much, like at all. So this is where I would pick Bloodworms if your haste is low, but once we start getting more and more haste, like 30% from our gear and such, I'll be swapping over to Voracious to see how it works. But for right now, I'll take Bloodworms. And the last row, also debatable, is it are you doing dungeons, progression raids, or farm raids? 
If you're doing dungeons, bone storm all the way. The AoE damage and healing is super busted. There's just no way around it. Red thirst is if you're on a if you're in a farm raid, like you've already cleared it and it, the bosses are easy. Or purgatory for progression raids, where you're not sure if you're gonna kill the boss that pole. Cheat. This is your cheat death. It's still something you need to have if, for progression. If I was on a farm raid and I knew I could clear it, I'd probably be taking Red Thirst because Vampiric Blood up time would increase. But for dungeons, Bone Storm's the way to go. So now let's look at stat priorities and such. Okay, so now for the stat priority, even though secondary stats also received a bit of a nerf to where they matter a little bit less, they still feel like they matter more at the same time. Like, it's really finicky about how gearing works right now. Basically, for a lot of tanks, item level is key now. If it's like a 15 item level upgrade, it's basically an upgrade regardless of what the secondary stats are. But if for some odd reason you were to get a piece that's the same item level or about 5 item levels apart, then stats will matter still a little bit. So it's basically 10 plus item level is your main because strength is now pretty much the strongest stat for all for all strength tanks and agility for all agility tanks. So it's basically strength, haste, versatility, mastery, and critical strike. Haste is still strong because you need it. Really now you need it more than ever. Especially since the tank ability was reduced and the self sustain was reduced. You need haste now more than ever for the rune regen and for the GCD. Especially for the GCD, like they really fucked up with the GCD. It's bad. Which which means haste only got more valuable. Versatility still matters because just like in just like in Legion, versatility is basically it increases damage and healing done by your versatility percent. And reduces damage taken by half of your versatility percent. In my case, I have 7%, or it's technically 6.5, rounded up to 7. So it's basically 6.5% damage and healing increase with 3.2 mitigation. Mastery is still third because it does the same as it did in Legion the Blood Shield up on Death Strike, and Critical Strike just doesn't really do much of anything. Because your parry, it doesn't even change your parry hardly at all either. So you so you want strength, haste, versatility, mastery, and critical strike. Next up, we have actually Azerite traits. Actually, that's that's a new thing. So let's look into the Azerite. Okay, now for Azerite, this one is hard to get properly because RNG and the way Blizzard has been protecting the pieces, it's really hard to get the right ones. Especially for, since right, there was a point where you couldn't even loot them from Mythic Plus. I still don't think you can. I'm not sure though. But there's obviously different rings and different rings have different traits and certain traits are better than others. And it's very noticeable on a Death Knight tank who does or does not have them. Basically, for the top ring, and I kind of did this incorrectly. See, Blood Rite is strong too. It's actually really good for dungeons. Because of the haste proc. However, Bones of the Damned is actually probably better. So I kind of did this one incorrectly. Because I wasn't sure at the time. But now I know Bones of the Damned is strong because... Basically... Bottle Run has a chance to grant an extra charge of Bone Shield, and you get more armor when you have Bone Shield up. And t an extra 200 armor is actually a pretty decent amount. Right now, mine gives just over 2,000, so I have 2,200 armor extra when I use Bone Shield. And that, which could actually be a pretty big difference, to be honest. Blood Rite is good. But the thing about it was that it conflicted with Bones of the Damned. For the middle trait, the best in slot is not on this piece. 
you would really want like crystalline carapace or life speed. Crystalline carapace is actually pretty good because it's it's basically an armor proc. Before we go any farther, actually, let me see if I can find which Azerite pieces have it where. Well, anyways, I'll have to do some more research on where they're at. But you basically want you want bones of the damned on top. You want crystalline carapace and middle, and then for the bottom you want gem hide. Do I have a gem hide piece? Yeah, I do. This one I know comes from Otaldazar. Wait, no, it's not Otaldazar. I think it's Motherload. But you really want gem hide because if you get hit for a lot, avoidance and armor comes your way, and it can be reactivated very quickly. So you really want gem hide on as many pieces as you possibly can, bones of the damned on as many pieces as you possibly can, or archive of the titans, or both. It's pretty hard to figure out what which traits you want to get because you have to sacrifice some for others. There's no perfect world, unfortunately. So that let's see, we did we don't let's see we went over talents, stats, as right traits, trinkets. Let's go over trinkets. So let's say you are trying to do mythic plus or even raids. If you're looking for stat procs, you really want the Brazan screaming gleaming eye. It gives strength, which is your best stat. Now it is, and a haste proc. The haste proc is big. It's like ten percent. It's like at least ten percent. It's crazy. You also want Archive of the Titans because of the haste proc in Old Ear too. It's really good for Old Ear in particular, but it's also good for the strength value in dungeons too. Of course, Razan drops a lot. Drops our two best in slots for our pieces of gear. See, but you you want you want Razan's gleaming eye for the haste proc. You also want the Jess Howler for the. <laughs> For the versatility use use effect, this can be used both offensively and defensively for you and your party. So you can act. So this is actually a group wide verse trinket. You're giving them a little bit, and you're giving yourself some too. However, in terms of defensive trinkets, if you're looking for a shield, Mithrax. The heroic one gives a 70,000 damage shield. I saw a freaking 395 of this today, and it's like 89,000 total damage prevented, which is nuts. That's like almost 50% of your entire fucking health, and it happens when you fall below 40% health. Yeah, like, yeah, the cooldown of it's kind of long, but imagine you go down to like. They're like 40% health. This is going to happen. And one of my thing, one of my Azerite pieces has a different trait on it. This one already. So imagine if I fall, fall below the health, and then I get both the shield and this armor at the same time. Yeah. As long as I get that trinket, I shouldn't die. So for for defensive trinkets, he want the Mithrax tank trinket. For for extra stats, you want the Razan's Gleaming Eye and the Jess Howler. So that's pretty much that. Now let's go figure out the rotation, shall we? The rotation isn't really too different between single target and AoE. It really isn't. But there are some slight differences, possibly. Actually, not really. So basically... It'll go like this. I also specced in the Purgatory in case I'm in a progression raid against a big boss. Let's say he's the boss. Okay, anyway, so the, the rotation isn't too different between single target versus AoE. But in single target, I would not be running Bone Storm because the healing isn't very big. It's also why you don't take Mark of Blood. The healing's even even smaller. I'd take Purgatory if it's a progression boss, but if it's on farm and I knew I could kill it, or even a raid, I usually only 
swap this out for Red Thirst if the raid's cleared, not if certain bosses are. Because chances are, your guild might not let you, like, swap out talents mid-raid. So, if you know there's certain bosses you have yet to kill, keep Purgatory. But if you've cleared every boss and you know you can kill them all easy, take Red Thirst. But I'm going Purgatory in case this boss is one I have yet to kill. Of course, if if you're if you're tanking first, then use your taunt first, so that you have guaranteed aggro and make sure your other tank does not use his taunt. You only want the starting tank to taunt because if you both taunt or neither of you taunt, there's going to be some con some conflicts with the aggro. So you want to use taunt, and then I pop dancing rune weapon right away as, a, as an offensive cooldown. I also pop the Jet Hobbler Trinket for the versatility because that also helps you with your damage. I then use two things of Marl Run to fill up my Bone Shield. I use a charge of Blood Boil if it's one target. And then I just go straight into Heart Strike Spam and then maintain from there. So for example, I'll do a pull timer. Get my bone shield charges, one thing of blood boil, and then and then basically maintain from there. Really, really only the first couple spells are really picky. Oh, and obviously, if, if your Bone Shield Charger is starting to drain, you want to use another Marl Run to get them back. But I'm still using a few things of Blood Boil for Hemostasis stacks, too. Use Death and Decay when it procs because it's free. And if you can afford it, if Blood Boil and Death Striker are both ready to use and you that's and you're gonna choose between them next, you wanna prioritize Blood Boil over Death Strike if you can afford it. Because extra hemostasis. Now let's get out of combat real quick. This might take a bit. There we go, I think it's got myself out of combat. Yep, I did. Now let's swap the Bone Storm for the AoE. Let my Dancing Rune Weapon go off cooldown. Okay, so when you're doing a dungeon, you're likely going to have more bigger packs like this one. So this is where Bone Storm comes into play. You won't have a cheap death, but this will absolutely make up for it. So of course, you want to have a similar rotation opener, but there's it's going to be slightly different. Still good to taunt. Still good to rune. Pop trinket. Get my bone shield going. Blood boil with both charges this time. Build up my runic power. Use that. So now when I get to 100 runic power, I use bone storm instead. Not only is this doing a lot of AoE damage, it's healing you like crazy also. And, and you're also maintaining threat by doing this much AoE damage. You're, you're not falling behind because of the fact that it's a huge offensive cooldown. As you saw there, I peaked past 15k DPS on 4 targets. So there's that. You basically want to fill your runic power while getting your bone shield, getting your hemostasis going. Now, if the pack is hurting you while you're getting your RP, don't be afraid to use your vampiric blood, then bone storm. Because that also increases the healing also. And that, I believe, concludes the Blood DK guide. If there's anything I missed, let me know. If you have any feedback or, or you see something I may have missed, let me know, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you for watching, and I have to do five more of these now also.
Have a good one.